Hello, welcome to lecture 2.2. In this video, we're going to talk about descriptive methods. These are less powerful approaches to rigorously examining a question. They're not as powerful as experimental methods, but for the reasons we outlined in the previous mini lecture, sometimes you can't conduct um, true experimental methods. So in this video, we're going to look at two descriptive methods, observational techniques and case studies. So observational techniques, the name says it all. That's when you watch an event or a person or something happening. You simply observe to try to understand. There's two ways you could do that. One is called naturalistic observation. And in naturalistic observation, you just observe without getting involved. So uh, when CSUN opens back up, there's a wonderful set of cafes uh, called Freudian Sips. We'll talk about that when we get to Sigmund Freud. And I love nothing more than to sit outside of a Freudian sip and watch the world go by. Um, if I had a hypothesis that I was trying to test in that way, I would be conducting um, an experiment using a descriptive technique known as naturalistic observation. Naturalistic observation has drawbacks, but it also has benefits. One of the advantages of naturalistic observation is that it's a great way to generate ideas. Um, another advantage is something called ecological validity. That is, you're studying the real world. You're not, when we move people into labs, uh, they start to behave differently. In naturalistic observation, you're looking at real world behaviors. The limitations, though, are numerous. One, you can't determine cause and effect, right? Um, you also don't know if your results will generalize. Just because I see a certain pattern of behavior at CSUN in front of my particular Freudian SIP doesn't mean that I'm going to find that same pattern of behavior in other parts of the world or even at other Freudian SIPs on other Cal State campuses. There's also a problem of bias. I'm the only observer. I determine what I see and maybe I'm not looking in the right places. So those are all weaknesses of the observational technique. Um, uh, especially naturalistic observation. The second kind of naturalist of observational technique is uh, called participant observation. And it is what it says, you participate in the thing that you're observing. So if you're interested in how children play or come to understand the world, you may get down on the floor and play with them. If you're Diane Fossey and you want to understand how mountain gorillas um, interact socially, you might eventually start interacting with them socially. Um, participant observation, um, again, you're studying real world behaviors, but there are a lot of drawbacks. So um, you're changing the phenomenon as you're participating in it. Um, you don't know about generalizability. Um, experimenter bias and reporting is a problem. As um, I'm on the floor playing with children, I'm not recording what's happening, so maybe I'm forgetting. The second kind of descriptive technique that I want to talk about is the case study. And in the case study, you study one case, one person or one group for an extended period of time. My favorite um, is a case study that a professor at MIT, Pavan Sinha, is conducting. Um, he was very excited when he and his wife had a child because, as you can see in the picture of Pavan's son right there, uh, there's a little camera on his forehead. Um, Pavan was able to uh, record everything that his son saw during the first months or years of his life. That's a case study, what one baby saw. Another famous case study is about a chimpanzee who grew up in a New York City apartment. I'm not kidding. The chimpanzee's name was Nim Chimpsky. Now his name is a play off of someone else who's famous in the field, a fellow by the name of Noam Chomsky. Noam Chomsky is a super influential uh, cognitive psychologist who specialized in the study of language. And uh, Chomsky argued that um, humans come into this world ready to uh, create and use language, that it's in our genes. 
So the question then, according to Noam Chomsky, is only humans have the capacity for language. Chimpanzees don't. So to test that idea, um, some researchers in New York decided to get a chimp, this little guy, Nim Chimpsky, and to raise him just as you would raise a human being baby, um, using sign language instead of verbal language, because chimps don't have the vocal cords that we do. So this professor, his name is um, uh, Herb Terrace. He convinced some research assistants to bring this chimp into their New York City apartment and to raise him as a human being and to teach him language in the same way that you would teach uh, a baby. So this is a case study of one chimpanzee that went on for years. Um, Nim eventually did learn 125 different signs or words, um, but he never learned grammar. So Nim's longest sentence is, give orange, me give orange, uh, eat, me eat orange, give me eat orange, give me you. Okay, super clear what Nim wants. Give me the freaking orange already, I want to eat it, All right? Um, but it's not uh, language per se, it's just words. There's a movie about um, Nim Chimsky um, uh, called Project Nim. It's uh, a heartbreaker. Um, after, when chimpanzees get to be teenagers, they tend to be uh, violent. Um, you can't have a violent chimpanzee in your apartment. Um, so uh, Nim was actually sold to an animal testing facility. Um, eventually, a group of people got some money together and got him out of there. You can't raise someone as a human being and then decide to treat them as a lab animal, right? That's unethical. Um, and he was able to live out the rest of his life on a big ranch with uh, uh, people who loved him, and he um, lived to be 26 years old. But uh, Nim is an example of a case study. So the advantages and disadvantages of case studies are advantages. You can really study something in depth, and that's going to give you new ideas, new insights. It's a way to generate new research ideas. But it's impossible to replicate. You can't do the same thing with somebody else. Right? Um, it's also related to that. You, there's no reason to believe that the results from one person um, can generalize, can describe all the other people or all the other chimpanzees in the world. Um, it's also very easy for researchers to come, become very attached emotionally to this one person or one chimpanzee that they're studying, and that can bias the results. You want scientists who remain objective. You don't want them to get um, overly connected with what they're studying. Um, and you also cannot use um, uh, case studies to test cause and effect. Okay, that's the end of Lecture 2.2. Come back in a second for 2.3, where we'll talk about another descriptive technique known as the survey method.